إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على دين كله ولو كره الكافرون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والله جعل لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا وجعل من أزواجكم بنين وحفدا ورزقكم من الطيبات أف بالباطل يؤمنون وبنعمة الله هم يكفرون وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من رأى منكم منكرا فليغير بيدي فإن لم يستطع فبلساني فإن لم يستطع فبقلبي وذلك أضعف الإيمان وبعد ما جاء brothers and sisters in Islam we thank Allah عز وجل for this month of Sha'aban and we ask him indeed to deliver us into Ramadan and to accept from us all our acts of worship our dua, our fasting, our charity. We ask him to make us good Muslims, that he will be pleased with us. And we ask him to save us from the punishment of the grave and that of the hellfire, and to save us from the many different anguishes of the day of judgment. To give us shade on that day, that there is no shade except his shade, Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa has given us many, many, many favors that we can't even count. And he tells us in the Quran, Wallahu ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwaja. That Allah has made for you from amongst yourself wives. Wives. So we do not have to go and get married to people to all outside of mankind. We have wives. And that is a favor from Allah Azza wa Jal to us. A favor of Allah Azza wa Jal to us. It's a favor. And how do some of us treat that favor? We are very ungrateful to that favor. And for that favor. Because check us out how we slap. And we kick. And we cuff. And we curse. And we tell them all sorts of nasty things. All sorts of things that, you know, some of us do not even want to repeat. So a favor of Allah Azza wa Jal that he has put there to protect us, that favor of our wives, our protection for us. He says in the Quran, Hunna libasul lakum. Hunna libasul lakum. They are garments for you, protection for you. From lusting and lewdness and adultery and fornication. Hunna libasul lakum, they are protection for you. So Allah Azza wa Jal give us, has given us a favor to protect us, and we are ungrateful. La ilaha illallah. Because of the abuse we give to that favor. Hunna libasul lakum. Wantum libasul lakum. Wantum libasul lahun. And you also are protection for them. So, Allah has created wives for us. وَجَعَلَ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَنِينَ وَحَفَدَةً And from those wives, He has given us children and grandchildren. From those same very wives that He has given us, He made children and grandchildren. And really, when you have your grandchildren, you'll see, you'll treat them better than you treat your children. Serious. Because now we are a little wiser and, you know, as I say, you get a little grace or a little grayness means wisdom. And we get, we are softer and we are mellow and we have learned our lessons and the mistakes that we would have made with our children. We would not allow our children to make with their children. Because alhamdulillah, we are still around and we can show them and teach them. So your children and your grandchildren are favors from Allah Azza wa Jal. And my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, those favors 
of the children and the grandchildren are there for us to enjoy. And we love those favors. But unfortunately, in our society, even among men who are Muslims, instead of loving the children and the grandchildren, they go and they make love to the children and the grandchildren. And this is not allowed. This is not allowed. And it's happening in our society. It's about three weeks ago, it was in the papers where a father was interfering with his daughter, not Muslims at that time, and a grandfather inter interfering with his grandchildren. And then we had a case about two weeks ago about a friend who drunk, drunken hit the two girls, and they were, you know, and you know the story, what happened. A friend, a close friend. So this is the state in which our society has sunk, and we have Muslims among them doing the same thing. Don't be naive. Do not be naive. And say Muslims don't do that. Yes, they're not supposed to do that. They're not supposed to do it, but they do it. A Muslim not supposed to lie. But they lie and drink alcohol, but they do. And they're supposed to be praying five times a day. And they're supposed to be fasting in the month of Ramadan, but a whole lot of them don't. So don't be naive and say Muslims all do those things. They're not supposed to do those things. And commit murder and gamble and you, what you may have and womanize. So these charges, these beautiful little charges we have, that we call our children, that we call our children. We are not supposed to be having such inappropriate relationship with them. And very clearly, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran. First of all, he starts with the father. You cannot get married to the woman whom your fathers have gotten married to, much less to have an affair with her. And then lower down he tells us, Hurrimat alaikum ummahatukum, your mother's a haram for you to get married to, much less to have sex with her. Wabanatukum and your daughters, wakhawatukum and your sisters. وَعَمَّاتُكُمْ وَخَالَاتُكُمْ And your aunts on both sides. وَأُمَّهَاتُكُمُ اللَّاتِي وَأُمَّهَاتُكُمُ اللَّاتِي أَرْضَعَنَكُمْ And the woman who suckled you. وَخَوَاتُكُمْ مِنَ الرَّضَعَ And your sisters from suckling. So these are categories that Allah Azza wa Jal is speaking about. And then he tells us, Wa umahatu nisa'ikum. And the mothers, your mother in law is haram to have an affair with her. Wa rabai bukumulati fi hujurikum minisa'ikumulati dakhaltum bihin. And your step daughters. Your step Daughters from your wives with whom you have been intimate with. Your stepdaughters are haram for you to get married to, much less to have sex with her. It is haram. And zina on the whole is haram. And there are many brothers and sisters. Even though they are married, they are committing zina. They are fornicating. It is haram. One of the characteristics of Ibad rahman the worshippers of Allah whom Allah loves, he loves them a lot, is walayas noon. They do not commit zina. They do not commit adultery and fornication. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, where are we going? 
If there's anybody in this audience here, and inshallah, I hope there's not, but this is a very big audience. If anybody in the congregation here, man or woman, if you are having a haram relationship with anybody, stop it. If you are having a haram, a prohibited relationship with anybody, stop it. If you are having a haram, a prohibited relationship with anybody, stop it and turn to your Lord and ask the victim for forgiveness. So we have this in our society. Our neighbors, person on the road, in another village, what do you do? Do you keep silent? Do you rat on your Muslim brother? You know that's a big thing, you're ratting on the Muslim brother. <laughs> Let me tell you what Rasulullah says about ratting. First of all, I'll tell you what the Quran says about ratting. Very generally, we love to quote this verse because it gives us strength. Kuntum khaira ummati nukhrijat lenas. You are the best of people that came out unto mankind. Because you know why? Ta'muruna bil ma'roof. You enjoin what is right. You command what is right. What an hawna anil munkar. And you forbid what is wrong. So when your Muslim brother... He is doing one of these things that is haram. Do you stop him? He's interfering with his 14-year-old, may Allah forbid, stepdaughter. Do you go and tell the police? Do you want to enjoin what is right and command what is right and forbid what is wrong? Or do you shut your mouth because he's a Muslim brother? So you don't want to rat him because your name will go out there. Yeah. I don't know if you call him a ratter, whatever. Your name will go out there. Yeah. And your Lord is displeased with you because you did not enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. So you wait. Wait. And see which you prefer. See whether we prefer pleasure from Allah Azza wa Jal. Pleasure from Allah Azza wa Jal. Or pleasure from people because we did not rat. And then Rasulullah sallallahu tells us in hadith. Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yugayiru biyadi. Whosoever you, if you see something that was, is really bad out there, munkar. Let him change it with his hand. Let him change it with his hand. For illam yastati' fa bilisani. And if he cannot for some whatever reason... He cannot change it with his hand and speak out against it, ratin, whatever you want to call it. But this is al amru bil ma'roof and nahyu al munkar. This is what is the meaning of enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. You have enough guts? Do you have enough guts, my brothers and sisters in Islam, to stand up for what Islam stands for? So the the kuffar attacking me and all kind of craziness and this one doing this and that one doing that and rah, 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 rah. And they want to take away the, the ability for the younger boys and girls to get married. I mean, all sorts of things. And we ourselves, allow within ourselves, within the sharia, within the laws of the land, we allow al-munkarat, a lot of nasty, evil deeds to go on. And there's a statement that people say, it is not a hadith, it's just a statement. Evil spreads on the land when good men do nothing. Evil spreads on the land when good men do nothing. Because it can look bad if you rat on your Muslim brother. It can look real bad. So, so, the hadith continues, for illam yastatir, and if he cannot change it with his tongue, can't speak out about it for whatever reason, for biqal bihi, then at least let him change it with his heart, meaning that let him hate it. Wa dhalika iman, and that is the weakest of these three categories 
of Iman of faith. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have a role to play in our society. We claim and we know for a fact that we have the best way. The way of Islam. We know that for a fact. We know our laws in Islam. The laws have catered for all aspects of our existence on the earth. But we only want to be known for certain aspects of Islam. And not, other, not others. And you know something? These horrors can come on our doorstep. Just like the drugs. And the murders. So the drug problem is a village away. We're not worrying about it. It come three streets away. It's not on my street yet. It come on the street. It's not on my doorstep. I mean, hit your doorstep. You're wondering why nobody doing anything. Because you didn't do anything. Because we didn't do anything. We have to pray five times a day. We have to fast in the month of Ramadan. We have to be good to our parents, good to our children, good to our husbands, wives, etc. And there are other things as well we have to do. Allah Azza wa Jal promised. He promised. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions that there will be safety after fear. And that he will give them the khulafa, leadership on the land, one after the other. And he will establish the religion. And he did it. Because the Muslims followed, the Sahaba followed the laws of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when you go to Medina, up to today, you will feel a sense of safety. Really. Even though most of the city right now, you have non-Arabs living here. Fine. A lot of Pakistanis and, and, and Bangladeshis and whatnot. Mashallah, Muslims, that is Muslims. And you'll feel safe. You can walk with your wife and your daughters on the street and nobody going to molest you. The guys and them selling gold and they don't have to worry about anybody coming to steal because, you know, you lose your hand. And it's safe. But they worked towards it. It wasn't a matter of just sitting down and let the chips fall as they, as they may. They worked. And they died and they were killed trying to establish that Islam in their place. And we are so reluctant, even certain basic aspects of our Islam to establish. Let's stop complaining and let's start doing our actions with respect to our society and ourselves, our family. Start by treating your wives and your children properly. Start by treating your own home properly. Stop the abuse, the physical abuse, the mental abuse, the psychological abuse, the verbal abuse. Stop it. And be the kind of person that Rasulullah was. Or at least try to be like him. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us all. May he keep us on the path of Islam. May he make us courageous enough so that we can be Muslim men and Muslim women in the true meaning of Islam. And that's something that we will concoct up, concoct up in our minds and our hearts. The true meaning of Islam. Amin akulu kawli hadha. وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ ذَنْبِ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ وَالْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ